In this example, we're being asked to use matrices to put the system in reduced row echelon form in order to solve it. So it's the same type of procedure we've done in the previous examples. The only difference now is we have a bigger system. We've got three equations with three unknown variables, but we're gonna tackle this the same way we have previously. So the first thing we're gonna do in the solution is write this system as an augmented matrix. So we're gonna have the coefficients ne uh, positive one, negative two, three, and we have a partition line here, nine, and we have negative one, positive three, zero, negative four, and then we've got two, minus five, positive five, 17. So this is our augmented matrix. And again, we're following the same procedure we saw before. We're gonna try to get this lower triangle to be all zeros, Simultaneously, we're trying to get the main diagonal to be all ones, and then followed by the upper triangle to be all zeros. And that will get us to reduced row echelon form, which will take us directly to the solution. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ask ourselves, what can we do to start generating zeros in this lower triangle? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. And again, there's, there's a few different ways of going about it. You have to practice. The only way to get more efficient at this is practice. So I'm gonna say row one plus row two in order to change row two. So by this step, I'm gonna be using row one to modify something in row two. Now the goal is to get this negative one to become a zero, and so this operation will do that for us. The next uh, operation I can actually do simultaneously in this same step will be negative two row one plus row three in order to change row three. Now, why am I doing that? Well, here I'm, I'm modifying, I'm, I'm using row one to change something about row three with the explicit intention of wiping this positive two out. Now you may be wondering why can I do both of these row operations in the same step? Well, the reason why is we're in both operations, we're just utilizing row one. We're utilizing row one to do something in row two, and then we're utilizing row one again to do something in row three. But rows two and three are not really being utilized together with one another. They're not, we're not making any kind of relationship between rows two and three. We're just making one relationship between row one and two, and then a separate relationship between row one and row three, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna open up uh, another matrix bracket. And uh, again, row one hasn't actually changed. So we're gonna keep it neg uh, positive one, negative two, three, and then nine. And then row two is what we're starting to change. So let's, let's explore this operation here. Row one plus row two to change row two. So we are gonna have one minus one. What does that give us? Well, there's a zero that we're looking for. We're gonna have negative two plus three is positive one, right? Negative two plus three is positive one. And then we're gonna have three plus zero is positive three and then nine minus four is a positive five. Okay, so that's our new row two. Now let's explore um, the second operation here, okay? We're gonna say negative two row one plus row three to change row three. So this, this operation will create a zero here, and then we're gonna have negative two times negative two is positive four minus five, will give us a negative one entry here. And then we're gonna have a, a negative six, right? Negative two times positive three is negative six, plus five will give us a uh, negative one. And then we're gonna have a negative 18 plus 17 will be a negative one here, okay? So this is our new matrix. And notice we've generated two zeros here. Now the next goal is to generate a zero in this entry. So here's what I'm gonna do uh, to make that happen. I'm gonna say row two plus row three in order to change row three. Now why am I doing that? Well, 
Again, I'm gonna, at this stage, I'm gonna use row two to change things about row three, specifically to with the intention of making this negative one become a zero. So I'm gonna rewrite rows one and two. Remember, I, I'm not actually changing rows, I'm actually not even using row one right now, so that definitely stays the same, but I'm not changing row two either. So I'm gonna repeat row two here. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using row two to change row three. So this zero stays where it is. Uh, row two plus row three to change row three, that wipes that negative one out to become a zero. And then we're gonna have three minus one is positive two. And then we're gonna have five minus one is positive four. So we're almost there. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say one half row three to change row three, okay? And so again, I'm repeating my first two rows. None of that's changing. Zero, one, three, five. Uh, now what's one half row three? Well, it's a zero, zero, and then two times one half is one, and then we get two here. So what do we have here? Well, if you look closely, this stage is row echelon form. Right, you've got a diagonal of ones and you have a lower triangle of zeros, so that's a row echelon form, but we need to keep going. We wanna go reduced row echelon form. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna successively work back up to wipe out uh, these, the, these upper triangular values. We want the upper triangle to be uh, all zeros, okay? So let's do that. Let's say, let's say, um, how do we do that? How about we say negative three row three plus row two to change row two. So I'm gonna use row three here and I'm gonna say negative three times that. I'm gonna add that to row two and that will create a cancellation here and make that to zero, go to zero. So you wanna ask, you gotta think critically. You gotta ask yourself, what can I do what can I multiply a particular row by and add to another row to create a cancellation? So you have to think about it, okay? We can also do the same operation here, but with row one to wipe out this three. So underneath here, I can also say negative three row three plus row one to change row one. So in this particular step, I'm not actually changing row three. So I'm gonna, I'm just using row three. So I'm gonna repeat row three back as it is. But again, we're using row three to change the other two rows. So let's look at our first operation here, okay? Negative three times zero plus zero is just zero. Negative three times zero plus one is just one. Negative three times one is negative three plus three is a zero. Okay, and then negative three times two is negative six, minus five is negative one. Okay, um, and then we're gonna, so we're done with row two. Now we're gonna perform this operation on row one. So this will remain a one right here. This will remain a negative two. This wipes out to zero. You know, you can, you know, punch it in your calculator or show your work uh, if, if you need to. Um, and then we're gonna have Negative six plus nine is uh, positive three here. Okay, we're almost there, look at that. If you look at this, we're, we're so close, okay? The last step we're gonna do is we're gonna say two row two plus row one to change row one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use row two to modify row one with the intention of making this negative two go to zero. So let's do that. Let's repeat rows two and three here. Okay, because we're, again, we're not changing rows two and three. So two times zero plus one is one, so that stays the same. Two times one is two minus two is zero. Uh, we have a zero here and then we have Negative two plus three is uh, one. And that's it. And so look at this. This is reduced row echelon 
form right here. Reduced row echelon form. And then as a system, you know, if we put it back as a system, well, we, we've got the answer. X equals one, right? That's one X plus zero Y plus zero Z equals one. And then we've got Y equals negative one and then Z equals two. The system is consistent with one unique solution. And that's our final answer. You can, of course, double check this in your in your calculator. Um, I've, I've showed you how to solve this using a TI-36X Pro in the calculator. And we actually have done the same example before, but not with matrices. I think we did this example with elimination uh, so that the, the solution to this particular um, system should be earlier in your notes as well. So that concludes this video example.